under the guise that they are not in our jurisdiction and they feel safe abroad, safe from the reach of our law, that they are taking note to. And I hope that anyone that they malign, people who they malign, you sue them now. This is one of the influencers. That's how people get influenced. Look at it. They drank the she cause me but the flat toe. You understand? Some people go watch and say, oh, we got similar refugee body. So I like she, she like. I'm not afraid of them. I ain't frightened Hicken. I ain't frightened Caesar. I ain't frightened Blenheim. I ain't frightened Jabdale. I ain't frightened Ali. I ain't frightened Ben. Listen. I don't want to go tomorrow, G. I ran around talking and the whole problem and the shit not be fun. Me no one get involved in them things now. Yeah, because G. I will hold the thing. Me no one go there and go for wrong talk and show them them people and all them things that then me no one get involved in that because you know what I mean. Look them right here with the men conspiring about this thing. Or if he's eat anything. Right? But this is wrong. And when you look at people like this, you gotta ask yourself. Now, bear in mind, there's not nobody exposing smelly smell, you know. This is smelly smell company, internet exposing Shabadi. Had to arch your back, forget a little bit about it. They're scared of the social media influencers because the information gets to the people directly. There's no Chronicle or there's no NCN or there's no PPP press conference to give them demagoguery. Hey, we don't care. I love your press. If I like, I love your bud. Hey, friend Ali, I love you one more time. I want to say thank you to all the supporters of the channel. And for the 92% of the brand new viewers that come through, and you ain't hit the subscription button yet, hit the subscribe button, buddy. The content is only gonna get better moving forward. I gonna wait. Thanks. How do they feel to go and defend that there are no contracts going to black people? How do they defend that only certain areas, roads, and other infrastructure development work is going on. How do they defend that? How do they defend that? They're scared of the social media influencers because the information gets to the people directly. There's no Chronicle or there's no NCN or there's no PPP press conference to give them demagoguery. They get the information directly from people and they could verify it they know if the information is coming from the jabun of an ass is nonsense and they know if it's coming with evidence from credible sources then that's the truth so by Jadel and his east indian supremacists can't cloud the judgment of the people by giving them bs and demagoguery so their way now is Oh, we gotta attack the people giving information directly to the people. But let me tell you this. <clears throat> you see this Negro here? Call me whatever, this nigga, whatever. They can't shut me up. They can't shut me up. I'm not afraid of them. I ain't frightened Hicken, I ain't frightened Caesar, I ain't frightened Blenheim, I ain't frightened Jabdale, I ain't frightened Ali, I ain't frightened Ben. So, Jabdale can send all the king's men to New York to try to investigate me, all the king's men to conduct espionage. <coughs> And I hope when they're caught. Yeah. I'm talking to you, the black ones in the Guyana police force, doing their dirty work, like Caesar and Sarabo. When 
you guys and your minions carry out the dirty work of the ethnic supremacists. Let's see when you are held accountable if Bart Jagde will stand up and defend you and hold a press conference and say that you're honorable policeman and that the crimes that you're accused of uh, are all made up and fabricated. How dare you ask back the episode for your money, Mr. Bess? Now, hear how you know that they're not even smart with this extortion the bar jams talk about. They all, they have sold oh, oh, thousands of Guyanese, particularly poor black people, money. Robbed them, scammed them, defrauded them. Nobody in Guyana must go back to BM sold. Let the East Indians go and support them. PPP East Indians. I live in America, like I said. We talk race. We're not afraid to broach the subject. The subject. And in Guyana, must do the same thing. And they try to tell you the laws of it. The laws are to prevent hate speech, not exposure of racism. We are not. I am not engaged in hate speech. I am exposing racism. Don't get it twisted. Big difference. But the people like to conflate the two to intimidate people. BM sold all the man money. Take the man fuel. Thief the man money. Stole the man's money. Police and take no action. Man liar write them. Police and take no action. Instead, the Guyana government and the Guyana police force are helping the criminals, BM sought to attack the advocates for them to pay back this man his money and criminalize the advocates. And listen to the stupid. BM sought called two people and asked those people to take down articles from US media that exposed those crimes, that they defrauded this American businessman. He paid them $50,000. And I'm learning this from the video interviews that has been released by the, from the, by the police, by police sources. They paid these guys $50,000 to tear down an American company website that had this story. So just imagine New York Post or the New York Times carry that story. BM so think that they're so powerful. They just bribe the guy in the government, they just bribe the police. So they think that they're so powerful that they can pay people to hack into New York Post website to take down the story exposing them for thiefing, defrauding, scamming poor people. Thiefing from, scamming, defrauding poor people. It didn't work. So then, the police who they had bribe, they got the police to say the man extorted that money from them. That, but that's their business. But then, so as to silence me, they said, Bark send the men. Bark send the men. When BM Soot pick up a phone, call them and tell them, come, thief, hack into this thing, hack into this thing and take down the website and you put up nice stories about bm so we love everybody we love the community we have the best prices we have the best conditions and terms for loans whatever i don't know i'm just making that up but that's what the guy said y'all don't believe me all right look them right here with the men conspiring about this thing everything you want everything you want
They need to be a response to it of their own. This is their You can start concerned now. But we need a response. You clapped up her practice today. You can come here and do it differently. The same thing that you gave me. So, what right to No, no, I don't have something. I just say you need to do I am not. You're a child. I'm like, I don't know, what are you talking about? I told him that he had to be talking to the church and leave it in here. Right? Y'all here for yourself. What they're doing there is exactly as the textbook says, cybercrime. They're conspiring to break into a website and tear it down. But they're East Indians from the PPP. That's not a crime. They're above the law. Ethnic superiority. E PPP East Indian ethnic supremacy. You think the guy the police force charged them with cybercrime? They have the evidence. And you know what? The guy the police force, well, I don't know. They didn't release that. Is police sources had to release that. Leak it. Right? But further, this same man who defrauded an American Guyanese businessman, $170 million. This same man, Afraz Mohammed, who owns BM Suit, part of BM Suit, who y'all just heard, sat down there and involved himself in a conspiracy to commit cybercrime. Still didn't commit a crime. Well, if he didn't commit a crime then, let's hear this tape and hear if, if, it's a, if he committed a crime. And we will discuss it on the other side of the video. Listen. I want to go tomorrow, G. Are you wrong? Talk and the whole problem and the shit not defend me. No one involved in them thing now. Yeah, because G. Are would hold the thing. Me no one go there and go for wrong. Talk and show them them people and all them thing that then me no one get involved in that because you know what I mean. Yeah. Now like lose car and lose ox and everything. Me no one do. And then you and I get pull up and best go get pulling and everybody get pulling. So you and best should set like a different one side and. No, yeah, son. So me no want thing. The me you no know, uh, because the people ask me how this are a registration at this name and this people still see the vehicle. I say I don't know. I just get a phone call from the mechanic. I don't know. So, I hear you. They ask me how the registration at one name and somebody else gonna see the vehicle, repossess the vehicle. How is that? So I say I don't know. Yeah, but then I get up for doing that. They, what they would do, they would seize the vehicle because the Jews. So that's what they would do. But Uncle Godfrey, they calling somebody from some some um, enforcement or something, something, some some, some force something though. Enforcement. But I don't know. Don't call enforcement. Eh? He don't call enforcement. No, he telling me that tomorrow when I go tomorrow, somebody from enforce or confinement something tomorrow morning when, when I go back to you tomorrow. So what if that cause, you, you, you hmm? don't know if it's a Jewish vehicle. Nobody. Me no know those, me no, you know me, 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 me no one, no? You know that big vehicle and let's say that's coming duty free, man? Nobody, got people have paid a duty for them vehicle at all, buddy. Nah, right. The because the vehicle of 5,000, they go off, how much? It's about 30 million dollars duty free. Well, people can buy vehicle for 30 million dollars. No, about leaving out buying the vehicle. 30 million without duty. Duty, duty alone is mm -hmm. about 30 million dollars. Oh, swant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. But I think you and Bear should fix up. I probably let me collect me get me vehicle, buddy. Don't carry anything to GR, eh? They tell you that I should. I'm not giving the vehicle. It's not me who loses, it's you who lose. Because if you got the GR, with the receipt and with whatever, the first thing they're going to do is pull the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But me don't want to fuck neither. Yeah, me don't want to fuck 
So, so uh, me think you and best should settle your don't, differences don't, and get don't, me out of it, buddy. Don't, don't do that part. What you got to do mm -hmm. is settle pressure from best. Let best settle his business with me. And well, everything in life is a give and take. A give and take. I know when you're growing up in GT, your mother say to give, but what you give back in return? You know, as a young woman, they say, hey, don't take no drink from nobody, car. You ain't gotta give back that same drink in the same bottle with the car, car. Or else. Right? So, sometimes when you see people so willing to give, give, give all the time, you gotta remember there's a take. Everything is a take. Guyanese people is not fools, you know. We ain't gullible. We know what's going on. But we need something and a lot of persons find themselves in destitute places and would happily receive those grants and those gifts from anyone that's willing to give. Everything in life is a give and a take and every person got their own selfish means for the reasons why they do things. Remember, it had to come from a place where you originated that thought upon why you wanted to do the things that you do. Now, the videos are there. The information is there. What do you guys think? Are you brave enough to have a conversation about this in the comment section? Because this situation is going on in GT and it seems like if it's a generational thing, you know, because it look like if we ever really getting rid of a certain circle of criminals, a certain circle of persons that is just willing to do whatever it needs be to get to their success. And even though the information is there, even though the evidence is there, even though we know what's going on, as Guyanese, you know, we say, Bye, yeah. the man doing the thing. Bye, yeah. yeah, the man, yeah, the man eating a big food. The man got a link. The man got a plug. The man, you know what I'm saying? The man can't get touched like that. You know what I mean? But for how long is society gonna operate like that? Where some persons think in a particular way. So, they operate within certain confines of the law because they might have a certain respect or a certain reverence for certain things that other people don't. But somehow these people with the respect and the reverence find themselves at the bottom of the society most times and as the sufferers and the ones them who find things hard. While those who are willing to go around, bend and find themselves through all kind of different ways and means, right? Instead of hopes and dreams, they make it. So we gotta ask ourselves. Sometimes, as you look at the video evidence, as you listen to the audio evidence, sometimes you just ask yourself, yo, I working so hard and I going through all of this and I suffering and watch what them man living, buddy. Is it really worth it? Is all of this hard work and is all of this discipline and all of this really worth it? When you see how these people is existing, and making it and doing it like that in your face and you can't do nothing about it what do you guys think man let's have a conversation about this in the comment section because look it coming from dead squad days it coming from black clothes days it coming from hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people all over the place dead every day you wake up somebody gone now there's so much so much more corruption and the good thing about it is that this is the digital age so that everybody could see what's going on and if they're willing and if they're brave enough they can do something that would make guyana a place where everybody can benefit from the wealth and not just one set of people buddy because with a society like that it's beer stress violence corruption and crime gonna happen because there's no way that one set of persons could always win 
and the other set is always losers. Something going on in the system. Something wrong with the system. Medium is not is not Rick for jerk alone. And this is this is another social media influencer. <laughs> The one with the refugee body is smelly smell. <laughs> so, Dan Singh company page accusing his brother that he does eat anything. This is Dan Singh's brother, Robin Singh here. And this is a this is not me saying. Dan Singh describes his brother as a little dog and likened him to a little sheep chihuahua dog, and he's that kind of person. Right? He's that kind of person. He writes a lot of letters. He has no substance. Um, there's a bark, when, even if there's a mistakenly bite, people would think it's a mosquito by them eating. So he come out now, dancing now, start harassing his brother, why he brought a pissing upon the refugee body? Or if he's eat anything. Right? But this is wrong. And when you look at people like this, you gotta ask yourself. Now bear in mind, there's not nobody exposing smelly smell, you know. This is smelly smell company internet exposing your body. Had to arch your back, forget a little bit about it. If smelly smell stand up straight, she's straight as a drywall. <laughs> she ain't only addition, the front part of your body is a refugee. The back part of your body is a drywall. <laughs> and she showing your body. Look at it, she got more belly than ass. It's not I make up these things. So when you show people this thing, nobody can sue me, smelly smell guy, I'm gonna say where the picture sheep on Facebook. Show people Shabati like a drywall and Shabeli refugee. You understand? A little kungsa berry berry. She got a little kungsa berry. <laughs> you know what you say unks, but it's not this in, in the belly is kungs. It's a kungsa berry berry. Right? So, this is one of the influencers. That's how people get influenced. Look at it. They drunk. She has me body flat toe. You understand? Some people go watch and say, oh, we got similar refugee body. So I like she. She like, she like me to me. So I like she and so. Right? So, this is one of the things. This is one of the influencers, right? So back to what Jack D was saying lawyer in my view very mediocre lawyer as Sanjeev Datadin is not a senior counsel but I I think he should have been the senior counsel in this case could point out pointed this this minor but major difference imagine people watching this thing instead of people vomit when they see the difference girl difference between the two a summon and a warrant when you're watching a woman and confused whether it's construction or we're talking about scunt, your body is half drywall and half is um um refugee. <laughs> Jack, you guys say bye. So with all his antics now, he knows that he was um he he knows he, there's a court case, he could come to Ghana. Actually I'm looking forward to him coming to Ghana to to defend all he could he he's been saying and you know he said a lot on social media about the government and about no, it's coming down here you gotta listen to this clearly the part he's talking about influence he's talking about rickford Burke. then you listen to when he says other social media influences we listen to that part we analyze that part and then we go back to what the news says about this Tetra. so he says it on social media. I think he would have proof of all of these things. Could easily present them. So it's not to do nothing with the government again. Huh? 
the Guyana police force, as a result of report they, re they receive from businessmen about extortion or the attempted extortion of monies out of them from by Rickford Burke and his criminal associates, a case was brought against Rickford Burke for extortion has nothing to do with the government again rickford burke is also in fights with the government again continue to attack jagu and everybody else so this serving of this summons and everything else ain't got nothing to do with um ain't got nothing to do with the government of guyana it got to do with businessmen who made report to the guyana police force that rickford burke want to extort money out of them right simple it's not complicated what this thing is about roger the court about the racist ppp and the criminality of the ppp etc he could produce those in court too whilst he's here um so i hope that the other social media influencers so listen to this carefully. I hope the other social media influencers and Jack Dio was making specific reference to people like Smelly Smell. You understand? Yes, yes. You know this girl Smelly Smell? If you look at she, she smelling she self. She got a, a, a scent. That's how she get the name Smelly Smell. Because they have different odors. Like if you're going down the way, the rubbish bin pass, you see the rubbish bin truck, but you know it just passed. Right? And look at your face. And again, that's not me getting no secret picture. She, she put out your body out there. Ref half refugee body, half drywall. Right? That's not me. So when Jack Dio talking, I'm me, say. Jack Dio talking. When he talk about influencers, it's people like this he's talking about, right? So let me go back there. Um, so I hope that the other social media influencers who are operating. Hello, good morning, sir. Hello? Yeah. I want to say thank you all the supporters of the channel and for the 92 percent of the brand new viewers that come through and you hit the subscription button yet hit the subscribe button buddy the content is only gonna get better moving forward i gonna wait thanks under the guys that they are not in our jurisdiction and they feel safe abroad safe from the reach of our law that they're taking note to. And I hope that anyone that they malign, people who they malign, you sue them now and get somebody to serve, hire somebody abroad, authorize people to serve them the notice or the. Now listen to carefully to what Jack Dio said. I hope the other social media. Now, again, the matter brought against Rickford Burke was brought by the Guyana Police Force as a result of reports made that Rickford Burke and criminal associates were attempting to extort money from them. Businessmen made report to the police, right? Now, for the record, everything on this channel is alleged. I'm not trying to bash anyone or tear anyone down in any way. That's not what this platform is about. This platform is about keeping that neutral pole and presenting from a neutral place. Who are these businessmen, though, that made the allegations? There's a video that I had put up before. That's titled Rickford Burke Alleged Extortion, Co Accused Speaks. Check it out. It's on the channel, and I'll put it in the link or I'll link this video to it.
you know, you'll get a more rounded perspective as to what might be going on here, allegedly. This situation is years and years in the making. It's a situation that's been building. We're now able to be quite entertained by the climax, but let's not forget that it's actual life and persons are actually living this situation. And these are actual brothers of the soil that are at odds with each other. And we're hoping that they can find some way to make a situation work where no blood is shed and where no one finds themselves a victim of some one of these circumstances here because it's really building up and it's building up to a fiery climax. What do you guys think though? Let's have a conversation about this in the comment section. Allegedly, what's really going on here? There's a lot of smell inside of it. There's a lot of things in here that, you know, don't smell quite too right. Right? Not the most pleasant of orders. Because we got to joke with the ladies a little different than we would joke with the brother them or that we would joke with the friends them in the street. Especially when it's on a platform like this because guess what? Every woman from Guyana is a Guyanese woman. And not just Guyanese women deserve respect. That's not what I'm saying. But if you break down one, my perspective is you break down all. You understand? Because you never know who's who. You never know who come from where. Right? So, I know it's a joke. I mean, in the circle of brothers, we might joke like that. Right? But on a platform, on social media, with a platform of that size, I'm just saying, time and place, right? Yes, they're going out tonight. The immigration pick up all the Spanish. No more kudo. No more, it's a tail. The immigration, the president, I love you, what? I love it for Ali. I love. My president, I love you, but oh God, but I said, you see that? The immigration cleaned the old road just now. We see big bus, giant. Shut him in. Come here. No. Eh. The mother's gun. No more kudos. We're going to have that. We're going to have peace now. Are you fuck are you? When guy needs out of a foreign country looking for the money, immigration shy we in the bus without we clothes, we passport, deport we. And I get we fuck lock we up inside the cell and we spend two days in the lock up in another country now. We country is upgrading, but we don't care. I love your presence. If I like I love your bud. In front Ali. I love you one more time. <laughs> no. We you said that we just said something like this because it seems like look, sometimes, right? Sometimes just clear off one problem and just create the next one, right? We can talk in the comment section. <laughs>